Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Choices Finding Your Joy. Today, we are going to have a very fun, fascinating guest. I am really excited to share with you Beth Ruggiero York. She is the author of the fantastic book, Flying Alone, and it's a memoir. She's going to talk about her book, her history. She is a former pilot for Trans World Airlines. Just an amazing background and history, and I'm just fascinated. So first off, Beth, I want to say welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. I'm so happy to be here. It's, it's a great opportunity. Thank you. And I'm just so honored to share you with my audience. Oh, thank you. I would love to start out with having you share a bit of your background, your history, and, and what brought you to where you are today. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a long, sometimes sordid <laughs> story, but um, I, uh, my background, if we start from college, uh, was I studied uh, East Asian studies and China in particular and the Chinese language. I have a love affair with the Chinese, the, with China. I love the culture, everything about it and the history. Um, and I, I loved that while I was studying and I, that, but that was back in the night, early 1980s. I graduated college in 84 and that was also not the height of uh, good relations with China, although they were, things were developing. It was just opening up. And when I graduated from college, I had studied in Taiwan. I really wanted a career that I, where I could use this. But then um, at the time, there just wasn't much to be done with my degree. <laughs> and, you know, it was, I really had chosen it because it was something that interested me. I didn't even think about, oh, gee, what will my career path be? <laughs> so after graduation, I said, okay, this is not going anywhere as well as far as a career. What else have I ever wanted to do? And I, I gave it a lot of thought. And I remembered one day about the fact that I wanted to learn to fly. And that was going back many years um, on the, from the first time I ever flew alone, um, actually on a TWA flight. And for those of you who are too young to know what TWA is, it was one of the major airlines um, and it got eaten up by uh, American about 2000. At any rate, um, that's the airline I ultimately flew for. So there was kind of some significance there. But that first flight alone, it was so exhilarating. And I said, oh, I'm learning to fly. And I was about 13 at the time. <laughs> put, it, put it away. And then after college and needed to find something else, I said, oh, I'm going to learn to fly. And that's what I did. Um, went to the local airport. What was that like, Beth? Flying an airplane taking off, being up there in the sky, flying that airplane and saying, I'm in control of this. I'm doing this. It, it was exciting. It was very exciting. I, um, I loved it. Um, there were a lot of emotional issues intertwined with my career path in, in aviation through those years. So that it was a, a process of gaining confidence in myself and which I did but um, it, it was it was exhilarating especially later on when I fully felt in control and uh, it was it was it's it's a it's very fun but it's also uh, challenging and um, I was new in this completely new I just graduated with a very academic degree <laughs> And here, and I went to the local airport, I'm taking flight lessons, and the first thing I do is uh, get a job at the airport as the line person. And the line person at an airport is the one who is driving the fuel truck, fueling the airplanes, um, and washing the airplanes and doing all the grunt work. <laughs> and so, but I needed an income, somewhat of an income stream, it wasn't much, 
uh, while I was learning to fly. Got your foot in the door. Got my foot in the door. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, that reminds me, my 27 restaurant years, I started out as a hostess, bussing tables, and ended up uh, being the owner. You know, we progress. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's kind of like that the mailroom. You know, I worked in the mailroom and worked my way up. <laughs> Same as you. Now, but, back then, Beth, were there a large number of female pilots, or were you limited in that area too? Yeah, you know, there were very few at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, there really were. I, I was actually the first person who worked the line job who was a woman, and, um, and so that was kind of a novel thing. But yeah, it, it was mostly a male world. Um, very much so. It still is, but it has gotten so much better. And it would nowadays, it's not unusual to be walking in the airport and see a, a female pilot. Uh, in those days, that just didn't exist, yeah. or it, in num very small numbers. Yes. Yeah. So, did you? I would think that there were some experiences or flight situations or, or, you know, working with, you know, your staff that really there was probably, you know, some really fun experiences. Definitely. There were very, it was, there were a lot of fun experiences. There were also a lot of terrifying experiences, but the, but there were fun ones. Um, one in particular was the chance I had a couple times to fly in a small twin engine plane. Um, across country and it was to take a box out to California from Massachusetts and uh, I was by myself and I got to uh, I had the, a great time it was so much fun um, I got to choose where I stopped and where I stayed overnight and it was just a and I got to see the country at a low altitude from the air and that I'll tell you is a very very great experience. Oh, I bet that was breathtaking. It, yes, I, I was, it's so memorable. It's, it's just in, etched in my mind. I, I loved that. Yes, yes. And your book, it recounts your struggles in the aviation world, you know, mm -hmm. climbing your way to become a pilot. Anything you'd like to share about that part of the book with us? Well, um, there were there were a lot of situations, especially in, in the eighties. It was a different aviation world, um, and to become a pilot uh, to go where I was wanting to go, which was the airlines, uh, at that time as a civilian pilot uh, with civilian training was very uh, challenging, and you had to build hours. That was the name of the game to get the interview, to get the interviews with the airlines. They won't look at you if, unless uh, at that time it was only, if you had 3000 hours, okay. I mean, flying hours, that's when they start looking at you. So the, the name of the game is building hours and we would do anything to build those hours, including working for, um, fly by night companies, no pun intended. Well, maybe pun intended. <laughs> And it, um, it was a, so it was a very uh, interesting process. It, there was, there were a lot of unsafe flights, but um, I had wanted to go through the military to do this. And when I, uh, when I started taking lessons at the local airport, um, I also was going to, I visited in Boston, a Navy recruiter because naval flight training was the best there was. And this is before Top Gun came out. <laughs> um, that, but it was known, you know, naval aviation is the best training. And uh, I wanted that, I really did. I also liked the, the idea of the military with the discipline and the structure. And what happened was uh, I had had one incident, um, medical incident, while I was traveling to China, where I lost vision in one of my eyes. And when that happened, uh, I had to return home immediately from China. They, nobody could figure it out over there. And this was in the early 80s and, or mid 80s in China. 
So the medical was, you know, not great. Got home and I was told I probably had multiple sclerosis. Uh, they put me on steroids, the vision was corrected, and everything went back to normal, but I still had this probable MS hanging over my head. Mm -hmm. And when it came time with the Navy, I passed all the tests, I was good to go, except I needed to have a physical. And um, my recruiter knew the situation, and, um, but I, it didn't work. They said, you're too much of a liability. And I was very disappointed. I, that was, that for me, that was the ultimate plan. But I uh, refocused and continued at the airport and just said, I'm going to do this the civilian way. And so I did. <laughs> Not as structured as the Navy would have been. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that is so inspiring. You know, it just shows us when, when we really have a passion for something and we don't let those challenges what we can achieve. Do, do you have any advice for women or even men, you know, seeking careers in aviation? What would you say to them? Well, uh, they can learn a lot from the book, a lot of what not to do, seriously. And, uh, but they can also, um, what I would say to these people, and that's kind of a part of my goal with the book is, is for different audiences, but specifically for pilot people who are learning to fly, people who want to be professionals. And um, you just have to stick with it. And you have to maintain your ethics and your, your priorities. And, you know, and most of all, most of all, I think I would tell people learning to fly in the civilian world and gain, building their hours, don't be afraid to say no when someone asks you to do something that is uh, in a compromised airplane or compromised situation. That's the, the, I think, the absolute biggest message. Because mm. I didn't, and that's what I learned. Listen to themselves, yes. Did you ever have moments where you considered quitting and not following through because of those challenges that you had? There were moments, I would say, after a, a very rough flight, and some of those are in the book, when I would get to the hotel after the flight and and just collapse, uh, knowing I would say, "Oh my gosh, I, I I'm not sure I can keep doing this." But and then I'd go to sleep, and in the morning I would be ready to keep going, <laughs> and so I did. So it was it was never a serious consideration, but in my weakest moments, yeah, I, I pretty much had had uh, had those thoughts. Yes, and I really found with your book. It, it was not only inspiring for someone who may be seeking a career in aviation, it was so inspiring in general in, you know, following our passion and continuing with the challenges and the things that come up. What, what are some of the most important things you hope to see readers take away from your book? I uh, I have lived my life as a, thus far pursuing my interests and my dreams, and I've been very fortunate that I've been able to do that. I would um, I want I think people need to see that. Follow your dreams. Don't let them go. Don't say oh that that's not going to happen, because. If you follow it, and even if you don't get to where you were hoping to get to, because there are situations like that, and my situation is one of those, but other things come your way in the process. And that is the way to open your life up to all the possible good things that can happen. Uh, don't just close the door and shut out the world because you think your dream is impossible. Yes, yes. 
And, and there can be times when you're feeling like it's impossible and it may be help from someone or something that comes to you that just, you know, helps you step right through it. You do have those moments. Yes. Uh, and you don't know what they're going to be. Mm -hmm. You don't know wh when they're going to come into your life. But if you're not open, it won't happen. Yes. Yes. And, and I would love to hear about, Beth, uh, um, I see that you're a professional photographer, uh, instructor uh, for Arizona Highways photo, Photoscapes. Yeah, they changed their name to Photoscapes. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear about that. And of course, because I'm a big Arizona fan as well, and Sedona lover, I'd love to hear about that. What, what brought you into that? And what do you- uh, It's funny, it, um, you know, I, about 10 years ago, I, um, I was dating someone who was a photographer and I said, well, if this is a work, relationship is going to work, and by the way, it didn't, it didn't in the end, it didn't, but um, if this is going to work, I better learn to photograph. And that's all I did in the a couple of years that he and I dated. And I learned everything and I loved it and it just turned it in very quickly into a, a professional situation. Arizona Highways, though, uh, which is a very special organization, and you know about it. People um, in the West generally know about it, but a lot of people in the East, on the Eastern half of the United States uh, may not be aware, but Arizona Highways, it's a magazine, and it's uh, run by the Arizona Department of Transportation. But it started back, um, I think, I want to say 80 years ago, I, and don't quote me on that, but um, as a magazine to tell people what was going on with new roads being built in the state because the state wasn't developed. Well, it evolved and evolved, and about, oh my, I, I'm testing myself, I'm going to say uh, 30 years ago, the, um, an arm of the, of the magazine was created to teach people um, photography because the, the magazine had become uh, known for its wonderful photography and still is and so um, but I didn't know what this was and when I met my husband who I am married to he um, and that was eight years ago he told me oh I you know I, I lead workshops for Arizona highways and I thought to myself now I'm from the East Coast I thought to myself, Arizona Highways, what's that? <laughs> and uh, I had no idea. Well, long story short, um, my specialty is night photography. And I proposed it uh, to uh, doing a workshop to the organization. And um, that was about five years ago. And it's been a great experience ever since. Oh, I bet the night photography is fascinating. And I have to share, I was just in Sedona last week teaching Reiki at a, a ladies retreat and driving from the Phoenix airport to Sedona, you know, up through the hills. Yeah. We went through a lightning storm. Oh. I had never done that my whole life. All the cars really? had emergency lights on. Everybody was going slow. Lightning all around us. I'll never forget it. So, yeah, so give us some pictures out there somewhere of, of something like that. Is oh, that yeah. something you would take pictures of, like a lightning storm, or is night photography more the stars? It's also the, the light, lightning storms, and in the summer, late summer, when the monsoon season hits um, in Arizona, these storms are amazing, and the photos that you can get of uh, the multiple strikes uh, in one image are just amazing, oh. really amazing. It's a fan and just to be there and see it, like you yeah. said. I but the night photography is, is um, it's a lot of things, but it's uh, for the most part, dark skies, stars, Milky Way, oh. in beautiful places, you know. Beautiful, yeah. And you have so many beautiful mountains there in Arizona and- Yes. And but we have beauty all over this amazing country. It, we do. Yeah, I we do. Thought being a photographer would just be so fantastic and, and so wonderful. So, it, it, 
it is very, very exciting. With having your book out and doing your photography, do you have any other new ventures or ideas that, that you see coming through in your future? Anything you're thinking about that? Well, you know, with the book out, and I, I wrote this book 30 years ago, at, right after my flying career ended because of the MS diagnosis. And I knew I wanted to, I knew I had to record all that had gone on. Um, and now I put it aside and now 30 years later, having revisited it and getting it published, uh, I realized that, you know, I love to write and I have written other books, um, photography, instructional type books, but I think my, my path, including photography and including my Chinese uh, translation is to write. And I've had so many amazing experiences in my life. I have a lot to tap into. I love it. I love it. Could you take a moment, Beth, to share with everyone your website, information, how they can get a copy of your book? Yes, um, thank you. The uh, website is www.bethrugeroyork.com and that's b-e-t-h-r-u-g-g-i-e-r-o york y-o-r-k dot com or you can go to flyingalone.net and that will get you there too <laughs> and the name of the book is flying alone it's available on uh, amazon and barnes and noble and the other and, and other online sellers um the in, incidentally uh, starting today i'm running a, a promo through um for the ebook version it's available in paperback and hardback too but the ebook is on promo through kindle amazon kindle and from today uh for the next three or four days it will be a dollar 99 and then it goes up to 4.99 and uh, it ends on midnight on october 13th october 14th is the official launch date of the book i love it i love it what uh, we have we have about four minutes left in the show what last messages do you want to share with everyone beth um, well, you know, there's so many messages that come out of, of uh, what I'm sharing in my book. Mm -hmm. But um, one that is there, but it's, it's not extremely prominent, is chronic illness. People who have chronic illness, where I, I have MS, uh, and it has been very challenging through the years. But I want people to know that even if you have a diagnosis for whatever, whether it's MS or rheumatoid arthritis or um, uh, there's, you know, any of the, uh, the chronic illnesses that, that affect your life tremendously, don't mark, don't see that as what define, that doesn't define your life. Your life is defined by what you do and what you pursue and what you can show for it. So don't let that be the defining thing in your life. When you talk to someone, don't tell them that that's the first thing about, well, tell me about you. And that's the first thing you say. No, that's not the first thing you want to say about yourself. Yeah. Keep on living. Yeah. Don't let it define your life. That is amazing. I love it. That's a powerful statement. And I would love to ask what triggered the title of your book, Flying Alone? Well, uh, a big part of, our, of the book and where, if you, if you read it, you see that I lost my father when I was 13. And that left a huge void in me growing up for the rest of my, those teenage years and early adulthood. And while I was flying, uh, I often felt I was alone, very much alone. Whether there was someone else in the airplane or airplane or not, that's it's a, it's more of a figurative flying alone. And I had to navigate that very difficult time in my life um, by myself, and nobody nobody could, else could really ever understand that. And uh, but 
it, it made me stronger. But that's where the flying alone comes from. I love it. I love it. That is a great message. And your book is really is an inspiration for all of us. I really want to thank you for all that that does and, you know, puts out there for, for everyone that reads it. Thank you so much. It's been um, a journey and a joy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so grateful to have had you on the show, Beth. I am, thank you, Paula. It's so nice to meet you. You're so welcome. I'm so happy to meet you. And to everyone out there, thank you for joining us. Love, hugs, and blessings. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Beth. Thank you.